Well, I'm glad you've joined me for this study on what the Bible teaches us about angels. Before we begin our study, though, let me invite you to worship with us at the Middle Fork Baptist Church. We're just outside of Blowing Rock, uh, next door to Tweetsie Railroad, and we'd be delighted to have you worship with us this coming Sunday. The message will be a continuation of a series on Bible characters. This Sunday, we're going to be looking at the woman Jesus said to remember. Now, before we begin, let's bow our heads for a brief prayer. Father, especially do we praise thee for those of thy children who have suffered loss and made it gain, for those who have experienced defeat and made it victory. If it be so that we are in possession of full health and strength, then challenge us to greater service by the amazing example of those who have done so much with so little. And if we ourselves bear the outward marks of pain or the invisible wounds of heavy strife, encourage us to go forward yet again, in dependence upon thy help, so freely available to all. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Well, what the Bible says about angels. Here's where we're going in this study. We'll be looking at today's interest in angels, then why I believe in angels and why you should. We'll look then at the nature of angels, at what angels do, how angels appear, the organization of angels, hard scriptures that deal with angels, an emphasis on New Testament books and the angels. And then we'll close by looking at some of the values that come from our belief in angels. So uh, that's going to be several sessions, but let's jump right into it. Today's interest in angels. Well, the Baylor Institute did a study about 10 years or so ago uh, of 17 Americans. I don't know how they chose them randomly, I suppose, in terms of what they believed about angels. 55% say that they've been protected by a guardian angel. 20% of non-Christians are in that group. 81% of black Protestants believe in angels. 66%, two thirds of evangelicals believe in angels. 55%, over half of Roman Catholics believe in angels. 10% of Jews. And a little over a third, 37% of those believing had an income of over 150,000 per year. That's 10 years ago. So that's interesting. Well, we're going to be looking at some of those um, books for just a moment that deal with angels and why it has such appeal. For instance, look on your screen, The Secret Life of Angels. Now, I don't know who really thinks they know that much about the secret life of angels, but more than 150,000 people have bought book, copies of that book. Try to find out, I guess. I remember reading somewhere that Billy Graham was talking with uh, someone and the topic turned to angels and both admitted they had never heard a sermon on angels. Have you ever heard a sermon dealing with angels? Have you ever thought, why not? Why haven't we? Well, there was uh, an overemphasis in the Middle Ages on angels, and that has a little something to do with it because uh, we went from there into the Reformation period and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but back in the Middle Ages, there used to be great debates on how many angels could stand on the head of a pen or what do angels eat, that kind of thing. And then along came the scientific approach for the last two, 300 years. And uh, nothing kills angels like scientific approach. So there came a period of disbelief and disinterest, uh, not only in angels, but in spiritual matters somewhat in general. But now in these last couple of three decades, there has been a resurgence in belief in angels. And uh, people are much more open uh, to some really interesting and sometimes um, 
far-fetched ideas about angels. Sophie Burnham, she's author of at least one, I believe two books on angels, a major guru in this new age theology. She believes the current popularity of angels is because we've created this concept of God as punitive and jealous and judgmental, while angels never are, she says. Hmm. They are utterly compassionate. Or as Time Magazine put it, for those who choke too easily on God and his rules, angels are the handy compromise, all fluff and meringue. They are kind and non-judgmental, and they are available to everyone like aspirin. I, that, that's not badly put. Guardian angels have become especially popular among uh, New Agers in recent years. The Los Angeles Times reported that times have gotten so bad that guardian angels are turning up in individuals' lives with increasing frequency, and people are more receptive to these heavenly beings than ever before. John uh, Rahner, author of Do You Have a Guardian Angel? He agrees. He says people find a great deal of comfort in the thought that something larger than themselves and benevolent may be looking out for them. And angels, uh, we're told by the New Agers, can bring meaning and purpose into our lives. Author Terry Lynn Taylor says these angels make life worth living, so to speak. They provide us with unconditional happiness, fun, mirth. They also help out with romance and wealth. That's why we have a book there on the side of your uh, this slide showing uh, the romance angels. And they help us extinguish worries that plague our lives. Angels are heaven sent agents who are always available to help you create heaven in your life. You know, some of those statements, if you interpret them in a different way, are not bad. But I don't think the way these books are interpreting them make much sense. Angel enthusiasts also assure us that angels can help us cope with death. In their encounters with the angels, humans gain experimental assurance that they too have a heavenly home. And Sophie Burnham just mentioned earlier, she affirms, we don't need to be afraid to die. We do not die. This I have learned. This much I have seen with my own eyes. The angels, she says, have shown her this. Okay. The New Agers tell us, in addition to some of these things, we can make a declaration to the angels who will help bring about what we desire in life. Is this beginning to sound like some uh, televangelist? Quote, making a declaration to the angels means that you are openly announcing what you want known to heaven. I'd suggest prayer. But declaring your goals and statements of things to come will establish a plan of action and add higher inspiration and aspirations to it. It sounds like a celestial form of positive confession. That is angel assisted, name it and claim it. But to Moses own, New religious experiences, some of these angel writers believe, uh, they believe that uh, when a new angelic guide comes into your life, he may uh, lead you to acquire a desire to know something about a particular culture or religion that was previously foreign to you. If, for example, um, if one of your angelic spiritual guides is from a Native American background, why you may find yourself having visions that put you in touch with Mother Earth. Even biblical angels have gotten into the act according to these New Agers. Michael the Archangel is said to be a strong proponent of free thinking. And he allegedly encourages people to create their own religions. Here's a quote, Michael sends us inspiration that urges us to open our minds to new ways of thinking and encourages us to figure out for ourselves where we need to be and how to get there. 
creating our own religion can help us free our thinking and figure things out for ourselves. Well, we'll check this out later. So where we're going in this study? Well, I've just, uh, we've just been there where there's a great resurgence and in interest in angels. Now we're gonna move on to what angels really are and really do and how they appear and the organization of angels and that sort of thing. So let's us mosey on into why I believe in angels. Well, the Bible teaches angels in various strands of the biblical uh, teaching and writings in the historical sections of the Bible, in parables, in the apocalypse. But the main thing and most important is that I believe in angels because Jesus clearly believed in angels. Let me share with you these scriptures. You may want to jot down the ones you see on your screen there. But remember that Jesus said to the crowd, take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you in heaven, their angels continually see the face of my father in heaven. And again, speaking of when the end of the world could be, Jesus says, but about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the son, but only the father. And then uh, in the garden, when Jesus was to be arrested, he said, do you think that I cannot appeal to my father? And he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels. That's thousands and thousands. In the gospel of Mark, we read, do you think, I, no, we read, those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And again, uh, talking to some folks, the Sadducees, about uh, the resurrection and life beyond, he says, for when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. And in Luke's gospel, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. And even in some of his parables, Jesus says, in reference to the lost coin and sheep and boy, he says, just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, you remember, the poor man also died and he was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. And then in the garden, we read in Luke's gospel, an angel appeared to Jesus and gave him strength for the trial that was ahead. Jesus clearly believed in angels. I do not believe it's sufficient to say he was simply a child of his time. Angels are real. But go further. What's the nature of angels? Let's look at that for a moment. The nature of angels is clearly seen. They are created beings. For instance, in Psalms 41, 48, we read that God commands, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his host, praise him, sun and moon and shining stars, all creation, including angels. And in Colossians, we read, for in him, all things in heaven and earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. And here Paul is speaking of spiritual powers that he speaks of uh, quite a few different times. All things have been created through him and for him. God alone is uncreated. God alone is eternal. First Timothy, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Angels then are created beings. Only God 
is eternal and uncreated. They are spiritual. They're not flesh. In Hebrews, are not all angels spirits in the divine service sent to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? And Paul says in Ephesians, for our struggle is not against enemies of flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We will find later on about the rebellion of angels. And then in Matthew, we read that they are spiritual. They're not fleshly. For in the resurrection, we neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels. Angels have no souls. Angels know nothing of growth or age or death. They are distinct from humans. We should keep this clearly in mind. For it is clear, we read in the book of Hebrews, that Jesus did not come to help angels, but to help the descendants of Abraham. And again, we're told in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels and festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Angels are distinctly separate from people. We, we do not become angels. That's one of those popular heresies, isn't it? That when you die, you become an angel. No, no, no basis for that. We find, though, about these angels that angels have free will. Some chose to rebel and some chose not to. And we read in the book of Jude, the angels who did not keep their own position, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains in deepest darkness for the judgment of the great day. That's a terrifying passage of scripture. And then we find in Matthew's gospel, then he will say to those on his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And then again, uh, Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Some were obedient and some are not. We remain, uh, we, we see that some remain true and some fell. And in Isaiah 14, 14, we have uh, the verse, I will ascend to the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. And that has often, usually even been identified with Satan. Uh, it's not about Satan. It is, uh, it, it is a, a curse upon the king of Babylon but I think it's instructive for uh, the devil himself, it seems from scripture, uh, was a rebellious angel. We find that not only do they have free will, choose to be obedient or to rebel, but we find they have superhuman power and wisdom. For instance, uh, look at Matthew's gospel and, and the others on the resurrection day and the angels who roll away the stone and suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it and his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow and for fear of him the guards shook became like dead men and second Peter we read in the second chapter Whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not bring against them a slanderous judgment from the Lord, but they wait till judgment day. And we find in the book of Acts, during the night, an angel of the Lord came and opened prison doors, let the apostles out on more than one occasion. And then in the book of Revelation, I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding at his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. He sees the dragon, 
that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the pit and locked it and sealed it over him. So you see, we have here in, in my thinking, a little different uh, picture of angels. We generally think of them as the little sweet, kind, gracious people as we see them coming to Mary or helping the little children at the bridge and protecting them. And yet when I read scriptures like we've been reading, I'm reminded of an old science fiction movie. You probably saw it too. It was entitled The Day the Earth Stood Still. Do you remember that movie? There's a clip from it or frame down there on the screen. And uh, Gord, I believe, was the name of the uh, the name of the robot. And remember when the spaceman was uh, injured, how Gort uh, took him into the spaceship, and the spaceman later warned the folks about Gort that he could destroy the whole Earth if they were not careful. I think angels are filled with a tremendous power. And I think they may be a little more like the robot than like uh, the sweet uh, defender of the little children on the bridge. And yet we read that these angels are not omnip uh, omnipotent. They are not omniscient. They are not uh, omnipresent. They are limited. And they are either obedient to God or they are in rebellion from him. So to sum that up, and we'll stop here for today, the nature of angels, they are created beings. They weren't and they won't be forever. They are spiritual, not flesh, but they can appear uh, as fleshly as like we are. They are not human and we don't become angels when we die. They have free will like us, and some rebelled and some did not. They are more powerful and wiser than us, but they are not, uh, as I said, omnipotent or nor omniscient or nor omnipresent. They don't know everything, and they are not all strong, and they're not everywhere. So you may want to go back and look up some of these verses. And I look forward to seeing you next week when we explore further what the Bible teaches about angels.